In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction on how to use Tinker's Mod Designer for Minecraft. In the Tinker Mod Designer, there's a code block library on the left, and a search bar. This is where you can search for a specific code block if you already know the name. And if you ever need a short description of what a certain code block does, simply click on the block. This large area in the middle is a coding area. This is where you drag and connect your code blocks to make your mods. Along the top, we have the toolbar, where you can exit the mod designer, save your project, and deploy your mod into your private Minecraft server. First, you need to know there are three different block types. Event blocks trigger the code. Parameter blocks are placed into other code blocks and act as a value or an option. And operation blocks perform an action. You can differentiate these by the shape of the block. Now all the code blocks are divided into different categories. I'll go through some of these and give a short example to show how some of these blocks are applied. Under control, here we have all our event blocks. These blocks dictate when the code is triggered. Here's a block you can trigger the code by simply left-clicking a certain Minecraft block. Many of these blocks have parameter blocks already set. You can drag these parameters onto other blocks as well. In the flow category, we have our conditional blocks. A conditional is a fundamental programming concept. For the conditional block, the code within the if block is triggered only if the specified parameter is met. Next, we have the blocks category. These code blocks control certain blocks and objects in Minecraft. Let's see an example with these in action. Let's try to make a mod that turns grass into brick. First, I'm going to add a conditional if block to the event block. From the shape around the false here, we can tell the if block requires a parameter. Under the block category, I'm going to choose the block is grass parameter. Because the block in this parameter is grayed out, I have to specify which block the parameter is referring to. I can do that by dragging it from the event block. So far we have the conditional if the player left clicks a grass block, then now, we have to decide what happens next. I'm going to add an operation block in the conditional. Let's use set type of block to stone. We can't forget to specify the block parameter. And if I click stone, there's a drop down of all the things I could turn the grass block into. I'm going to choose brick. And now our mod is, if the player left clicks a grass block, then set that block to brick. Here's that mod applied in the Minecraft world. Let's create another mod. I want to create one that spawns 5 pigs when I call a command. Let's look at the call command in the control category. This only triggers a code when the player types slash ty and the command. Let's change the command to 5 pig. Next, let's look at the world category. Now world blocks let you manipulate different elements of your Minecraft world. This includes casting lightning, setting world time, and spawning mobs. Let's choose spawn pig at location. Because the location is grayed out, we have to specify the location. Under the utility section, there are blocks that do exactly that. Let's put the get location of player in the location parameter. This current set of code spawns one pig. How do we spawn 5 pigs without dragging 4 more of these blocks? Under the flow category, there's a repeat block. Now all we have to do is drag that in, and place the spawn block inside it. Next, let's change the 10 in the repeat block to a 5. Now we can spawn 5 pigs with just one command. Here's the mod applied in the Minecraft world. Another important category in the mod designer is the player category. These blocks allow you to control your Minecraft players, entities, and items. You can do things like set the game mode, call on entities, and clear your inventory. 
Let's use these blocks to make a mod that teleports us to where we throw an egg or a snowball. For this, let's start with this projectile event block. Then, the conditional if block. In this conditional parameter, we want to teleport under two conditions. When the projectile is an egg, and when it's a snowball. How do we do this without creating two different conditionals? We use an operator block. All operators are parameter blocks. Generally, they handle all things having to do with numbers and math. From here, we can use the OR block. This allows us to give two parameter options instead of one. Let's put that here. Next from the player category, let's set the two parameters with two entity is blocks. We'll specify the entity by dragging the projectile parameter from the event block and choose egg and snowball from the drop down options. Finally, let's add the teleport block and drag the player and location parameters from the event block. Once we hit save and deploy, the mod will automatically be loaded into our private Minecraft server. Now we can projectile teleport with our eggs and snowballs. Let's see this mod in action. By combining all these different code blocks, you can create all kinds of mods for your Minecraft world. Ready to get started?